Hello, this is Jack Jackson. We're going to continue looking at hypergeometric distributions. And we're going to see how we can use some shortcuts for the TI Inspire uh, calculator here. Now, the TI Inspire and the TI 84 have built in PDF and CDF functions for both the geometric and the binomial distributions, which we've already found have been very useful for us. Helps us avoid many, many computations. But unfortunately, they do not have such built-in functions for the hypergeometric distribution. Um, it's too bad. It would be nice. It's a useful enough distribution. They probably should have done this, but they haven't. Now remember, however, the hypergeometric PDF is just made up of three combinations. Uh, with, but combinations are built into the calculator, so you could work it out, a PDF, by just doing three combinations. But something that's kind of cool is the TI Inspire calculator allows us to program new functions. And so we can use this fact to help us program in a hypergeometric PDF and a hypergeometric CDF function in the TI Inspire. Now, when you program a function in the TI Inspire, it can actually be accomplished by a single line in the calculator at the home screen. This is pretty cool. So let's just recall our formula before we get going. Recall the formula for the PDF function is capital N is the population size, capital M is the number of successes in the population, capital N minus M is the number of failures in the population, lowercase n is the size of the sample, in other words, the number of items chosen or how many times you, um, how many Bernoulli trials that we do, fixed number, and X is the number of successes chosen. So that we get the formula, the probability of X, or the PDF of X, is M choose X times capital N minus M choose lowercase n minus X all over uppercase N choose lowercase n. Well, one problem we have here for the calculator is we're using uppercase and lowercase n, and the calculators don't really make a distinction there. So we're going to need a different letter. So one of these has to be replaced by a different letter. I'm just going to replace capital N, the population size, with S for size or, or sample space. Anyway, it's the population size. So everywhere in this formula we have a capital N. We're just going to put an S here and an S here, just so that we have different letters. Actually, all you have to do to type this in, it's very uh, straightforward. You just type in your combination, basically just type in the formula with the general letters in, store it as whatever we want to name our new function, HGO PDF, and then give it, pass it the parameters, and and hit enter and it's done. So let me let me go ahead and do this. Let me add something here. Let me make this, uh, let's see, make that bigger where we can see it. Okay, so this is the screen that's normally up here above the keyboard. I've kind of got a split screen here. Okay, so you just go to, uh, let's see, parentheses for the numerator, menu, we want to go to probability, and we want to do combinations, okay, combinations, and it's NCR, okay, so we want to choose the number of, we want to choose the successes first. So there are M successes in the, in the uh, population, and from that we want to choose X of them. Now we want to take that and multiply it by another combination. Probability, combination. Okay. Now we want to choose the failures. Okay, well there are population size, which we're going to use S for. Normally we'd use capital N. Minus the number of successes, which is M. And that's the number of failures. And from that, we're, that's the number of failures in the whole population. From that, we're going to choose the failures in our sample, which is N minus how many successes we have, so that's n minus x. Multiply those two together, and that's the numerator. Divide that by the total number of ways of choosing our end objects, which is another combination. Menu, probability, 
combination and we choose the whole population so let's see that's we're choosing from s items we're choosing n items and that will compute it for specific values of m n s and x or n yeah okay so we get all those things so what i'm going to do is i'm going to hit the store which is control and variables this sto key that gives me the arrow and i'm just going to give this a name i'm going to call it hgo for hypergeometric and this is a pdf so i'm going to call it pdf now what we have to do is we just have to tell it what what things we're passing to it and i'm going to choose this order i'm going to choose the order sample or uh, population size comma number of successes in the population comma sample size comma number of successes in the sample and then once I put that in and hit enter, I have a new function. So now if I type uh, if I type in a function, I start typing letters A, B, S. Oh, it recognized that as the absolute value function. See, it went from italics to back to regular letters. So if I start typing hypergeometric, look what happens. H, G, E, they're all italics here. H, G, E, O. Uh, PDF PDF oh now it recognizes that as a defined function which it went to uh, non italics and it went to uh, boldface so that's a function that we've defined now we just have to put in our numbers so let's say we want to do this with a um, let's see here just a minute Okay, let's just make up something here. Let's say we have, let's say we have one of these things where we have uh, something to choose from. Let's say there are 50 colored balls in an urn. Let's just say, for example, and out of them, uh, 36 are, say, black. Okay, and we want to we want to choose from that a sample of 10, size 10. Now think about our tree. It's going to be two branches each, but it's going to be 10 deep. Take us a while to draw that all out, wouldn't it? But let's say, how, let's find the probability that the number of, uh, well, we're, the black balls in our sample is, what's well, going to be somewhere between 0 and 10. Uh, let's say, what was the probability that it's exactly 6? And there it is exactly, or if I do control enter, there it is in a decimal form. Most of the time we're going to be wanting a decimal form anyway. And that's slick. Okay. We can also find a hypergeometric, we can make a hypergeometric CDF. And that's because we have a summation function in here. So see this little button right here. Uh, you can see where my mouse is. See the pointer right there with these symbols on it. Click on that. And there's several different things here we can do. Make a fraction, a power, a root, so forth, matrices, lots of different things, some calculus stuff. But right here is one for um, doing a sum. So click on that, and we fill in the blanks. So let's put in a variable. Let's say K, and we want to go from, okay, let's see. Let's make this work the way a CDF works on the binomial on the um uh, on the Inspire, which is not truly speaking a CDF, because a CDF, cumulative density function, actually goes from forever left up to the, the x value that you're inputting and finding the probability of all that, which in this case, forever left is zero, because there's nothing to the left of zero that has probability. Um, so, um, so we could just start this from k equals 0 up to whatever our, our upper limit is. So up here we're going to have some upper limit. But in fact, let's actually do it from some lower limit to some upper limit like that. So this is L and that's U. And then what we need, since we already have the hypergeometric PDF, we can just use it. H, G, O, 
PDF. See, notice that HGO PDF is a function. It can be used in the middle of another function just like just like anything else can be used. Now we want to do this in general. Let's get put our letters in the same order. We want S for the population size. Then we want the number M for the uh, number of successes in the population. We want N for how many we're choosing. And then we're going to have to pass it the lower and upper here. Uh, I'm sorry. We're going to pass it the whatever K is. K is the variable. So whatever K is. Now what is this going to do? This should take the hypergeometric PDF function that we just defined. It'll evaluate it when K is L. And then when K is L plus 1, K is L plus 2, all the way up to and including when K is U. And what this will do is add up all of those probabilities, and that's exactly what we want for this, the CDF. So let's get out of this to the end and do control variables to store. And we're going to give this one a name. We're calling it HGO uh, CDF. And we just have to pass it the parameters that we need. So what's, what is ultimately this based on? It's based on S, M, N, and then L and U. K is just a variable it used internally. So let's go ahead and give it those variables in that order. Population size, successes in the population, sample size, lower x value, upper x value. And what this will do is not truly speaking a, a, a CDF. What it is is difference in two CDFs. So what it gives us is a the probability that X is between L and U for a hypergeometric distribution with a population size of S, number of successes in the sample is M, and the sample size is L, and hit enter, and that gives us a new function. And so now I could figure out, uh, I could type that one in, HGO CDF. And then, uh, okay, so let's let's again let's use 50 and 36. So a sample size, or population size of 50, 36 successes in the sample, uh, uh, 36 successes in the population, sample size of 10, and instead of just saying the prob probability that, that to x is 6, let's say how about the probability that x is between 5 and 9 inclusive? Well, you can just say 5 comma 9, Enter, there it is exactly, and control enter will give me approximately, so about 95.5%. So, and that's slick, and of course, once you've done that, you can save as long as you've saved your document. This will be there forever uh, in that document unless you overwrite it or delete it somehow, and so this will, um, this will be available to you as a function. So you might even want to make a document called statistics, okay, and actually, uh, you know, go here, and uh, you can go to uh, you can go here and save it. Actually, I have one saved as statistics already that. Uh, I have this this uh, created in. Okay. So here in the slideshow are the screenshots again. There's this. There's where we stored it and created the hypergeometric PDF. And then here is using it. So once you put this in, you might try it out and see if it works here. So for example. If there are 23 balls in an urn, 15 are red, we choose n equals 6 of them without replacement. Without replacement, so it's hypergeometric. We want to know the probability we choose exactly x equals 3 balls. So we use a PDF. We want to find the probability that x equals this last number, which is 3. So the order you put it in is population size, 23. Number of successes in the population, 15. Sample size, 6. The x value we're interested in, the number of successes in the pop in the sample, which is three, and there's the probability uh, given both as a fraction and decimal. 
Here's the CDF programmed in. You just saw me do that a, a minute or two ago. And here it is at work. Uh, this one here again, N is 23, M is 15, little n is 6, and X is number of red balls. We want to find the probability that X is between 3 and 6 inclusive. So 3 and 6 are your limits there. Next video, we'll show you how to do this for a TI-84 calculator.